Rolling Horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> The daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver, let's go, big fellow. Oh, Silver, away! Reed, teenage nephew of the Lone Ranger, was a passenger on the stage to Pecos. There were two other passengers in the coach, an elderly man and a girl about 12. They had ridden in silence for some time, and Dan had been somewhat embarrassed by the way the girl continually seemed to stare at him. Finally, the old man spoke. Sure rough travel on these stages, isn't it, son? Yes, it is. You live in the West? Yes, sir. Reckon I ought to introduce myself. I'm Jed Anson. Most folks call me Gramps. And this is my granddaughter, Alice. I'm glad to know you. I'm Dan Reed. Dan's a nice name. I like your voice. My voice? Well, you didn't notice, I reckon, but Alice, uh, well, she can't see. Golly, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't mind, Dan. I was born without sight. Oh. Gramps reads to me a lot and tells me what he thinks. Yep, and Alice is just as excited about coming out to this new country as you'd be, Dan. Oh, then this is your first trip west, Mr. Hanson. That's right. We've come from Kansas City. Going to live with a nephew of mine who has a ranch out near Pecos. I see. I, I mean, I understand. Ever hear of Bert Dennis of the Circle D Ranch? No, sir. Well, he's my nephew and Alice's cousin. Her parents are both gone. So is my wife. So he invited Alice and me to come live with him and his wife, Amy. I understand Bert has a fine place. Oh, I know. I'm going to like living on a ranch. You like your cousin Bert, too. Of course, I've never met his wife. West is a fine place to live. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. <laughs> too bad, Alice. You can't see how handsome Dan is. Oh, Grant, you shouldn't say that in front of Dan. <laughs> well, it's all right, Alice. I think you're very pretty. <laughs> By Jiminy Dan, you sure know just what to say to a girl. Why, when I was your age, I, I was tongue-tied when it came to making nice speeches. Dan, I, I hope you'll come to the ranch and see us sometime. Will you? I'll be glad to, Alice. Do you live near Pecos? I'm staying near there a while with friends. This bridge is only a mile from Pecos. We'll soon be there. I reckon Bert will be there to meet us. Now, we'll be expecting you to visit us at the ranch within the next few days, Daniel. So don't forget. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
meantime, Bert Dennis and his wife Amy, a thin-featured, domineering, and sharp-tongued woman, were driving toward Pickles on a buckboard to meet the stage. Bert, I still can't get over the fact that you invited your uncle and his granddaughter to come to live with us. The idea of waiting until yesterday to even tell me about it. Now, Amy, take it easy. We have plenty of room for them, plenty of cash, too. I knew if I said anything about asking him to come, you'd have put your foot down about it. Bert Dennis, you forget I'm your wife and I have a right to my say. Yeah, right or not, you've always said it. Oh, is that so? Well, you just listen to me. I, I spent half my to... time listening to you. You to get your way. This is one time I'm having mine, understand? I just don't know how I happened to marry you, Bert Dennis. <laughs> it didn't just happen. You planned it for months. Then you roped and hogtied me before I knew what was going on. That's it. Try to change the subject. Well, I'll tell you this much. That uncle of yours and the girl are going to earn their keep at the Circle D. Yeah, we'll talk about that when they get there. Now stop yapping. I want to get to town in time to meet the stage. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Later, the stage arrived in Pecos and pulled to a stop before a group of curious audience. Dan Reed was the first one off and found Tonto waiting to meet him. Hello, Tonto. Uh, hello, Dan. Me bring Victor, him over at Hitchrack. We go now, right to camp. Wait a minute, Tonto. I want to make sure someone has come to meet two friends of mine. Dan and Tonto stood watching as Jed Anson alighted from the coach, <laughs> then turned to help Alice. All right, honey. Careful now. It's all right. I have you. Hello, Uncle Jed. I'm mighty glad to see you. Birds. Hello, Alice. Oh, you're a welcome sight after that long ride. Alice and I are both about tuckered out. Oh, I feel fine, Cousin Billy. Oh, I'm so glad we've come to live with you. Oh, you're not very smart for a youngster. Oh, uh, this is my wife, Amy. It's a pleasure, ma'am. How do you do? Frankly, Bert, I expected your uncle would be a younger man than he is. Land sakes with an old man and a child. Keep quiet, and a Amy. Where's your manners? Manners? <laughs> I suppose you expect me to wait on that young one like your uncle was doing. Helping her off the stage like he did. Amy, I reckon I forgot to tell you. Alice can't see you. Great day. An old man and a blind youngster. If you think I'm going to spend my time looking after them at the ranch, you're mistaken. Golly, Cousin Bert, I, I thought... It's I... all right, Alice. Your cousin Amy doesn't realize what she's saying. Oh, don't I? Well, let me tell you, Bert Dennis, You I tell me when I... we get home. Come on, Uncle Jed, I'll take you and Alice to the buckboard, and I'll come back and get your luggage. Let's go. I'm sure it isn't going to be long before both of you realize you'd be much better off back in Kansas City. As I told Bert... Golly, poor Mr. Hans. And Alice, I'm going to have it very easy going at the Circle Spread Tunnel. Mm, that's right. It's plenty bad, and pretty young girl like her, not able to see. Yes, but she's used to it. She's mighty nice, Tano. We became friends on the stage. Ah. We go get horses, Dan. Lone Range awaken at camp. Tonto and Dan Reed soon arrived at the Lone Ranger's camp. The boy told his uncle about the old man and little blind girl on the stage, and told how they were received by Amy Dennis when the stage arrived. When Dan had finished, the Lone Ranger remarked, I'm sorry they run into a situation like that, Dan. It isn't going to be pleasant for them at the Circle D. I promised to go see them, but the way things are I'm now... sure they'd like to have you visit them. Perhaps in a day or so, Mrs. Dennis's attitude will have changed. Uh, it take plenty to change woman with sharp tongue. Oh, I suppose so. Dan, and Tonto and I will be busy searching the hills for some trace of Matt Strong and his gunman. You'll have plenty of time to visit your new friends while we're searching. Mm, that's right. I'll ride over to the Circle D spread tomorrow. The following day, while the Lone Ranger and Tonto went into the hills in search of the outlaw Matt Strong and his followers, Dan Reed rode to the Circle D ranch. Amy begrudgingly allowed him to visit Gramps and Alice on the ranch house veranda. Two days later, he again visited the ranch. Alice was alone on the veranda when he stopped. Oh, oh Victor, oh, steady boy, easy <laughs> Hello, Alice. Oh, Dan. Oh, I'm so glad you've come back. Sit down and talk to me. Cousin Amy went to town and Gramps is resting. Huh. How are you getting along now, Alice? Oh, I, I like it here. And Cousin Bert is awful nice, but... Cousin Amy, well... Well, she doesn't want us here. Maybe she'll change. I don't think so. I couldn't sleep last night and I heard her talking to Cousin Bert. She was talking real mean about us and she wants us to leave. Well, Bert, 
Now that those two relatives of yours are sleeping, there's something I want to say. Well, say it and get it over with, Amy. It's all right for you to be so big-hearted and all that, but don't forget, I'm your wife and I have to be considered. Well, that's one thing you never do let me forget, Amy. After considering you, I don't see how they bother you any. Plenty of room here, and they keep out of your way as much as possible. I'm not going to play nursemaid to an old man and a child who can't help herself. As I see it, he'd be better off in an old folks' home, and she'd be better off in an institution. Well, Pete's sake, Amy, what's come over you? Now that we're prosper, you're turning mean as all get out. I've worked my fingers to the bone to make us prosper, Bert Dennis. And I don't aim to see this ranch turned into a home for your helpless relatives. Oh, be reasonable, Amy. After all, I have something to say around here. I'm having the say about this matter, Bert. Now, when I go to town for the payroll tomorrow, I'm going to inquire about places they might go to stay, and that's that. As far as I'm concerned, the matter is closed right here and now. I, I told Gramps about it this morning. He said not to worry, that, that he'd see to it we aren't sent to home. But I like it here, Dan. I really don't want to leave. Oh, golly... Maybe Mrs. Dennis will forget about it in a few days, Alice. I don't see how she can help liking you. Thanks, Dan. You're awful nice to me. Uh, I'll come back tomorrow and find out how things are. <laughs> Say hello to Gramps for me. All right. Goodbye, Dan. Goodbye. <laughs> He's voice steady. Come on, Victor. In town, Amy Dennis left the bank carrying a small black satchel and drove away in the buckboard. A few minutes later, a man entered the cafe and sat down at a table where a friend was waiting. I ordered the supplies at the store. We'll pick them up on the way from town, Sam. I hope you got enough. Matt is planning on leaving this territory as soon as we manage to get some cash. I think I know where we can get that cash. Huh? Where? That woman who owns a Circle D ranch just left the bank carrying a small satchel. Well? She came into the store first. Heard her tell the storekeeper to put some stuff in the back of the buckboard. That she had to go get the ranch payroll at the bank. Uh, maybe she's going right back to pay the hands. Huh? Uh, she said tomorrow's payday and it came around too fast to suit her. She complained that her husband was going to be away overnight to look at some cattle he wants to buy. So she'd have to make up the payroll herself. Maybe if we hurry, we could take a shortcut and intercept the buckboard on the trail. Then we could grab the payroll she's got. Now, wait a minute. That isn't going to work. Uh -huh. There's three of the cowhands riding with her. Uh -huh. I reckon we better wait till tonight, then. Yeah. Let's go tell Matt and see what he has to say. Right. A short time later, in a hideout shack hidden in a hollow, Dave and Sam were telling the outlaw, Matt Strong, about the Circle D payroll. So we figured it'd be easy to get it tonight, Matt. Yeah, that's a good idea, Dave. We'll all go, in case somebody's there with the woman. I understand they have a lot of cow hands to pay off. Well, that means a payroll will be a big one. We plan to get there about midnight, as the men in the bunkhouse will be sleeping. We'll grab that cash, then hit the trail for the New Mexico at dawn. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. To continue. 
That night, the moon was bright, and the Lone Ranger and Toto decided to spend a few hours searching for the outlaw's hideout. You'll be safe here in camp, Dan. Toto and I'll not be gone more than two or three hours. I'll be all right. I'm tired, so I'll turn in early and get some sleep. Well, that good idea. Tomorrow, Dan, we'll try to think of some way to help your two friends, Gramps and Alice. I wish there were some way to help them. Well, perhaps things will work out all right. Well, let's go, Toto. Easy, 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 easy fella. Come on, Toto. Get him up, Toto. At the Circle D Ranch House, Gramps and Alice were in their rooms. Amy Dennis sat at her desk counting out the payroll. Suddenly, the door opened. Don't move, Graham. What are you men doing here? We came to get that cash you have there. Stay at the door, Dave. Sure. Use Sam. Come here, pick up the cash. All right. <laughs> Looks like we struck it rich, Matt. You let that money alone. Shut up. Hold your gun on her, Sam. While I tie her to the chair. Sure. You aren't going to tie me up. Hey, you wild cat. <laughs> Still a will prosper. You wouldn't dare. Huh? Well, don't tempt me. This coat will hold you. You dirty, low-down crook. Why, it takes three of you to pick on a poor, defenseless woman. You're just no good scum, that's what. Nobody calls mad strong names like that and gets away with it, woman or no woman. I'll gag you right now, and then I'll settle with you for the name Paul. No, don't put that filthy bandana in my mouth. Help! Help! Uh, uh, that'll keep you quiet. What are you going to do, man? I'm going to put a bullet in this yapping female. What's going on here? Say, you let her alone. I'll fix you. I got that old cute man. Gramps grabbed Matt's gun arm and struggled a moment until Sam hit the old man with a gun butt and had him slumping to the floor. That'll stop you, old man. Good work, Sam. Now I'll carry the lamp to the door and toss it back in the corner as we leave. The place will go up in flames and those two fools with it. All right, here goes. Come on. Flames from the lamp were weakly flickering up the walls in the far corner when Alice opened the door to her room and came out. Graham! I heard a crash! Graham! I hear somebody! Where are you? Slowly, the youngster moved toward the sounds that Amy made through the gag until her reaching hands touched the helpless woman. Cousin Amy, I know it's you. There's something tied over your mouth. I'll get it off. Here. Quickly, child. I'm tied and a fire has started over in the corner. Now I'm tiny. Hurry. Alice fumbled with the cords until finally Amy's hands were free. She quickly untied her own feet, then got up from the chair. Grant, is that you? Yes, Alice, he's hurt. The flames are spreading. Now hang on to my skirt while I try to drag him to the door. All right. Amy quickly lifted Gramps under the arms, and with Alice holding onto her skirt for guidance, the woman dragged the old men to the front door. Now go out quickly, child. All right. There. Now you stand here near your grandfather. I'll go ring the farm bell to waken the hands. aroused the hands, and while most of them gave their attention to fighting the fire, several of them started out to trail the crooks. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode along a trail not far from the ranch. They had heard the alarm bell, and knowing it meant trouble, they were heading for the Circle D to help. But as they rounded a bend, they saw the group of cow hands coming toward them in the bright moonlight. There you are! stop and reach! We have it coming! Hold on, hold on, hold on. You were fools to turn and come back this way. You'll be hanged for robbing Mrs. Dennis and leaving her to die in a fire. Uh, you've made a mistake. You're the one who made the mistake, Missy. Mrs. Dennis said one of them was Matt Strong. Yeah, and he had two men with him. Now we're searching for Matt Strong and his men. We heard the fire alarm and we're coming to help. Not right. Stop lying. I figure you're Matt Strong behind that mask. We'll soon find out, too. Of course, I'll take your guns. Get up there. While the four others sat with drawn guns, their spokesman rode first alongside the Lone Ranger to take the masked man's guns. As he reached over, the Lone Ranger suddenly dropped his hands in a lightning move. With one, he knocked aside the cowhand's gun arm. With the other, he drew and placed his gun at the man's side. Now, tell the others to drop their guns, or you might take a bullet. Yeah, hold on. Uh, man, he's got to drop on me. Better throw down your guns. Now yours. Drop it. Ready. Good. Head in among the trees off to the side, Toto. Come on, Silver! Come on, Scout! He's smart! We got your guns! By the time the cow folks had retrieved their guns, the masked man and Indian had disappeared among the trees on opposite sides of the trail. Hey, dog on it. That masked man tricked us. No use trying to trail him now. 
They've made it tough by leaving two sets of tracks to follow. Which way? Well, the men must have the ranch house fire under control by now. We'll go back, get more men, then come back and pick up both trails. Let's go. Get up. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had separated and circled around through the woods. A short time later, they met some distance further along the trail. Oh, silver. Oh, easy, silly big fella. I thought I'd find you waiting, Tonto. Uh, it's easy to get way through shadows. While them dismount, pick up guns. They were following the trail of Matt Strong along here. Ah, uh, me see marks of three horses. Them go that way. This may be the break we've needed. We'll follow those hoof marks. Come on, Silver. Get them up, Scout. Three crooks had taken every known method to cover their tracks. <laughs> Finally, they arrived at the hideout in the hollow and entered the shack. Well, they got it, boys. Uh, sit down and we'll divvy the cash. Hey, look, before you start dividing the cash, let's have some coffee and some grub. I'll cook it. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Dave. That cash will see us in New Mexico and last till we pull another robbery. <laughs> I hope the next one's as easy as that one. With their knowledge and experience at trailing, the Lone Ranger and Tonto managed to follow the outlaws. Though their progress had been slowed, they finally reached the edge of the hollow and pulled rain in the shadows. Oh, oh, oh. Easy, oh, come on. Oh. Easy, scout. That shack over there must be the hideout. Uh -huh. We'll move carefully and approach on foot. And your gun's ready, Tonto. Uh -huh. All right, come on. Inside the shack, Matt and his two gunmen had just finished the coffee and food Dave had prepared. Uh, you make a good cook, Dave. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, now that we've eaten, let's get on with dividing the cage. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll count it all first, then divide it. Where's the door? Mass down, Bray Alfred. Draw, Sam. Right. Drop those guns. I'll get your gun. Uh, oh someone shot through the window, too. I didn't come here alone. You all right, Kimisabi? Yes, Tonto. That must be the stolen cash from the Circle D Ranch. I'll take it. Now, we be Don't touch that cash. Reach you on the edge. I'll keep your hands in the air. You left the clear trail for us, your father. Geez, we got here just in time to see you trying to double cross your path. Right. I told you before you were making a mistake. Those are the crooks who robbed Mrs. Dennis. I'm sure the big fellow is Matt Strong. We've been hunting him for days. Ah, Matt Strong, all right. But don't let that mass hombre lie out of this. He and his Indian friend are in it as much as we are. They wanted all the cash for themselves. That's a lie. We'll take you all back to jail, mister. And this time when they say we'll get your guns and unmask you, you'll not have a chance to pull any tricks. Men, all of you keep these crooks covered. I'll take the masked man's guns and pull off that mask. I warn you, you better not try. Hey, others are coming. Be ready, men, just in case. What's going on here? Hey, Chad, you got here just in time. That masked man and engine got the drop on those other three. They were just about to make off of Mrs. Dennison's stolen cash. I'm glad you arrived, Sheriff. I think you were notified that Tom and I would come here to search for Matt Strong and his men. Uh. I did get word from the United States Marshal that a certain masked man and Indian would... Hey, you must be the one, all right. He mentioned an Indian called Tonto and said to use silver bullets. I looked that over. Hmm, that's silver, all right. Glad to meet both of you. Men, I'll vouch for these two. Right. You say, sir? One of the ranch hands came to tell me what happened. I picked up your trail hoping to join you in the search. Looks like the masked man and Indians saved all of us a lot of trouble. Oh, thanks, sir. Yeah, but Chad, Matt Strong said... Never mind what Matt Strong said. We'll take those crooks back with us and let Mrs. Dennis identify them. Tonto and I will ride along with you, sir. Later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived at the Circle D Ranch with the sheriff. Quick work on the part of the ranch hands had confined the fire to the living room. 
Amy Dennis was in the large kitchen with Alice and Gramps when the three crooks were brought in for identification. Those are the three crooks, all right, Sheriff? Yep, I... I recognize them, too. Good. I brought back your cash. You can thank this masked man and Indian for catching them and getting it back. Here it is. Thanks. But this masked man, who is... He and the Indian are friends, so don't worry. Did you say there are a masked man and Indian here? That's right. Oh. Uh, You must be Alice. Yes, I am. Uh, Dan was worried about you. He said you and your grandfather were having trouble. Mister, I reckon I know what you mean. But seeing as how Gramps was willing to fight to save me and and that Alice saved us both, well, their troubles are over if they're willing to forgive and forget. Cousin Amy says we'll stay here always. That's right, my dear. I'm glad to hear it. I'll tell them. Cousin Amy said she's going to take me to Austin to a famous doctor there. And that maybe he'll be able to make me see. Hey, I'd take a whack on the head any time to have that come about, honey. Uh, I, I reckon nobody expected to have me change so much. But I've been a fool and a nag without realizing it. Bert isn't going to know me when he comes home from selling those cattle. I'm sure, Mrs. Dennis, he'll be very happy. I'll uh, tell Dan to come to visit you, Alice. Oh, thank you. Cotton and I will get back to our camp now. We'll take those three crooks to jail. Thanks for what you did, mister. We're glad we could help, Sheriff. Adios, Alice. Adios, everybody. Goodbye. 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 You know, I still would like to know who that tall, handsome mask Andre is, Sheriff. I'm sure I know, Cousin Amy. And I hope someday I'll be able to see him and Dan. Little girl... To my way of thinking, it'll be a mighty proud moment in your life when you can see the Lone Ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Uh-huh.